afraid I might be uh, right with that. Anyhow, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Uh, yes, these aren't pajama pants. Just no, I was wondering what. Pants, what? So. <laughs> but uh, to zoom out, if the United States is more oligarchy than democracy, uh, whether or perceived that way uh, by a Princeton study, uh, movements like Occupy, or who knows which voters this season, um, is the U.S. leadership of the expansion of global governance or regional governance? Uh, likely to produce different results than we have here in terms of accountability, accountability to average citizens. Well, again, I guess I challenged the preface or assumption. What this election showed, if anything, is that popular will is powerful in this country, and elites had it wrong, and quite stunning. And the so-called experts, uh, I still believe in experts. Uh, I disagree with Mr. Gov about that, but it showed that the experts had lost touch with some of the um, society. Uh, look, I think it's important that institutions don't get out of touch. One of the reasons the European Union has lost popular support uh, is that it was seen as remote. That one of the phrases in the field for a long time was what was called a democratic deficit, that you had these institutions that had power over your lives, but you didn't seem to have a reciprocal power to really influence them. And that gap between their power and what people felt was the lack of their own create a tremendous resentment. So I, I don't think the answer is uh, referenda. I'm not a big fan of that. I think they're too easily manipulated and caricatured and all that, and too easily hijacked by populists. But I, but I do think that those who have positions of uh, authority ought to be held accountable. And they have real obligations to, uh, to explain. And if they fail to do that, they will then as Mr. Churchill said, they will receive the order of the boot. <laughs> Sir. Okay, I will, why don't we take them all and I'll do My goal was to avoid asking a gotcha question or highlighting some obscure but important fact of which he could deny knowledge. My goal was to publicly ask a reasonable but biting question of his intellectual framework, of which I'm an amateur student. This was my best attempt to steel man the globalist position. I don't think he answered my question in any way, but without an opportunity for back and forth debate, a non-answer is information too. Perhaps we can design even better questions together. Oligarchy, as defined by Merriam-Webster. Government by the few. A government in which a small group exercises control, especially for corrupt and selfish purposes. Oligarchy is a number of English words for a type of rule or government. Some of these words such as plutocracy, have exceedingly similar meaning. Both may be used to refer to rule by an economic elite, but oligarchy often has the additional connotation of corruption. My little joke in the beginning was a reference to the first audience question at this book signing. The audience member joked that he usually listens to Richard Haas in his pajamas at home. I was wearing funky pants I made for myself a few days before because I happened to so enjoy and value my nonconformist freak flag. I felt a need to address my goofy elephant in the room, which was half-filled with well-intentioned DC suits of all ages. It would not have been at all polite or constructive to try to escalate debate in that setting, so I just listened to his non-answer and nodded when he acknowledged a few true things like the resentment from the democratic deficit of many institutions. But from my interpretation, his answer seems to presume that the election of Donald Trump somehow represented a rejection of the oligarchy, which was the premise of my question. Afterwards, I pondered how the election of a billionaire had ended or signaled an end to oligarchic rule by an economic and corrupt elite. I was not previously familiar with the term democratic deficit. Given that referendums are perhaps the most directly democratic version of foreign policy making, it doesn't seem like his preferred systems of consent to global governance is democratic either. Oh well, he did not answer my question, which I would like to ask of any globalist. Why would we expect different or better results in global governance than we have experienced as citizens in the, quote, most democratic or, quote, freest countries in the world?